So Cori Bush is uh, currently sleeping on the steps of the Capitol. And the reason she's doing that is because the eviction moratorium ran out. Biden didn't lift a finger to change that and stop that. Um, the CDC didn't do it. Now, to be fair, the Supreme Court said, you know, they may not have the authority to do it on their own. So they're punting and saying it's on Congress. Nancy Pelosi is punting and saying, no, 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 it's actually still on the CDC. So here we are. Nobody's doing anything. And you have up to 40 million Americans, 40 million are behind on their rent. Uh, you know, the official number, if you believe it, is about 500,000 Americans who are homeless. 40 million are behind on their rent. Even if it, half of them, 20, 20 million, end up getting evicted. Look at the homelessness crisis. This is insane. So Cori Bush is sleeping on the, the steps of the Capitol to say, we got to act now. We got to extend this eviction moratorium. This is really not debatable. This is insane. This is a Great Depression level crisis. Massive credit to her for fighting on this front. By the way, one of the reasons this is so personal to her is because it literally is personal to her. She was homeless at one point in her life. So um, she's fighting on this. You got a lot of people who went to go join Cori Bush and, and stand in solidarity with her, and including a bunch of activists are there. So Max Blumenthal went to, um, I think this was the first night or the second night, he was there with Cori Bush. And then look at this interesting exchange and i heard like last night there was a lot less people it's great to see so many more people but i heard there was an intense debate about the role of the squad and why the squad didn't leverage its vote for the speaker for medicare right. for all vote and why the squad i mean with the margin so narrow in congress why the squad didn't um you know, yes because leverage its its its, its right. vote on the stimulus to get a 15 dollar minimum wage what no no so first, one thing that was said last night, which is something that is very true, and I wish we would have talked about that this was where your conversation was going because we're talking about the rally for tonight. And I really would love to keep the conversation on what's happening. I feel like it's all related people. to health care and, and the... It and absolutely is, but this is the thing. What was said last night is that this bill, Medicare for All, is not... No, there's no person on the squad whose bill that is, that is... Bernie Sanders' bill in the Senate, it is Pamela Jayapal's bill in the House. It is not our bill. We cannot make that bill come to the floor. There is nothing that we can do legally to get the bill to the floor. We have But Pelosi could have brought the bill to the floor. Oh, we're, we're good here. Thank you. Well, what? Well, I'm sorry, man. Well, we're fine at this. Why I'm can't she answer the, the question? We're here to talk about the eviction. But I feel like it's all about health care. Thank you. Well, no, really appreciate that. Really appreciate your time. We're, we're, we're here for a reason. It's about the more time. Well, why, why, why is that I can't ask about Medicare for All? But the congresswoman has slept one hour. She's done a lot of labor. I, okay, I, I'm trying I to get people out here, too. I respect your work. I'm trying to do the same thing uh, you all are doing. Thank you for being here. But why can't... You. She could just answer it, and then I go away. I'm not trying to, like, thank attack you. her or anything. So I'm not trying can, to, to smear her. Contact. We're happy to give you a contact, and you can return. But why is that issue, the Medicare for All vote, so... Like, she was wrapping up her... I'm not having this conversation. But she was wrapping... I'm happy to give you, I know she was I'm wrapping happy, up I'm her answer. Give, then I'm I was going to say thank you. Oh, Everybody, thank you. come out. I appreciate. But well, why that. didn't you let her just wrap up her I, answer? I really appreciate you. We're happy to give you a contact. You can feel free to reach out. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks. So again, on the issue of the eviction moratorium, don't get it twisted. She's 100 percent doing the right thing. She's fighting in the way that we want her to fight and others to fight. So credit where it's due. That's massively important. Having said that, the answer on this issue, Medicare for all, is just not good. Her, basically what she's saying is this isn't our bill so we can't do anything about it but that that means you just don't understand what the ask was because the ask was Pelosi needed the votes of the squad in order to remain speaker so the idea was hey withhold your vote from Pelosi unless Pelosi agrees to bring the Medicare for all bill to the floor for a vote um, and they didn't do that now, is it the case that, like, there is literally no possible response to that, to the question from Max? No. In fact, I, we had these debates and these discussions very publicly at the time, and the counter position to what my position is and what many on the left were saying, the counter position is, the reason we didn't do it is because we don't think it would help the cause of Medicare for all. We think it would hurt the cause of Medicare for all because we know that the bill isn't going to pass. We know we don't have the votes. It would be a big defeat for Medicare for all. And we think that would set us back. 
That that effectively would have been the argument. You could have made that argument, or you could have made the argument that we're wasting a lot of political capital to effectively get nothing done. So in other words, if you have the squad completely and utterly burn the bridge with Pelosi, um, and, you know, piss her off, and then you don't get anything for it because Medicare for All doesn't become law, then in the long run, that's actually going to hurt more than it helps because then Pelosi will turn around and try to do retribution and revenge against the squad and have other ways of undermining them and hurting them and their priorities. So those are the arguments that you could have made, which even though I don't agree with those arguments, they're coherent and they're logically consistent. And you can make an argument for those positions. Whether or not you and I agree with it is irrelevant. Those arguments were, you're able to make those arguments. But she didn't make that argument. She basically said that it's not our bill, so we couldn't do anything about it, which just shows that she didn't really understand what the ask was. Um, again, the ask was, Pelosi needed your votes in order to be speaker, so what if you said, well, you're not going to get our vote unless you bring Medicare to, to, for all to the floor for a vote. Now, she may have heard, it's very possible Pelosi would have heard that and said, okay, fine, and then allowed the vote on it, and then it would have failed big time. And then Pelosi would have been like, see, why'd you even bother to do it? But that gets to the whole, the theory behind why we were advocating for the squad to do this is, in my opinion, based on my reading of history, it shows that, like, women's suffrage, for example, it was a good example of, they voted on it three times before it became law of the land. And it failed a bunch of times. And at no point when it failed did that kill the issue. If anything... In the long run, it mobilized more people and brought them to the cause. And so the idea was, you know, if you have Congress run by Democrats, the better party, if they're slapping down um, universal health care in the middle of a pandemic, then that'll mobilize more people and outrage more people and get more people interested in politics, get more people involved, you know, and people will see just how corrupt these people are, how corrupt the system is, how much money these representatives who were against it took from Big Pharma and the for-profit health insurance companies and how rotten and gross it all is. And that'll outrage people, get them more mobilized, get them more involved. And then this is like, you know, the shot across the bow for a long fight we're in maybe at, after a decade or 15 years or whatever, we can end up getting Medicare for all by sufficiently putting enough pressure on them just like the Civil Rights Act, and by getting enough people who are ideologically aligned with us enough where they will respond to the pressure and vote for it. So, I mean, that that really is the long game argument. And that argument appeals to me. I think that argument is true. I think a, a reading of history sort of bears that out. You Sometimes you have some short-term losses for some long-term wins. It fires more people up. It gets more people involved. And it's just, listen, they didn't, they didn't have a good answer. They didn't have a good response. And... Uh, apparently there was somebody there the day before who was really arguing vociferously with members of the squad uh, on this issue. I, I think I do want people to be more nuanced and, and thoughtful in terms of what makes sense and what doesn't. And there's a lot of people who have just flat out declared Cori Bush and Ocasio-Cortez and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar and others like they're just our enemy now. That's way, that's not nearly thoughtful enough or nuanced enough. There are plenty of areas where not only do they agree with us on the policy, they actually are approaching it the right way, and they are fighting the right way. We're actually seeing it right now with the infrastructure bill, how they are willing to fight like Manchin on this particular front. Now, do I wish it happened sooner? Yes. Um, you know, but you gotta credit where it's due, and oftentimes now they are doing the right thing. So you, people should be more nuanced about it and more thoughtful about it, um, and don't like... Don't threaten them, don't, you know... People struggle with taking yes for an answer when they're given yes for an answer, and oftentimes now, you see sometimes the squad will do the right thing, and then people are still like, no, because I don't like you because you didn't do the other thing I didn't like. I think that's dumb, and I think you're not being thoughtful enough if you act like that, and that's kind of an idiotic thing to do. Um, but having said that, Max here completely stumped her, and Max is totally right, and nothing about what Corey said was convincing. And I do think that these people with power should look in the mirror and sort of say, maybe our critics are right on this, on this particular front. And by the way, Max asked that question in a masterful way because he also preempted, he brought up, oh, you know, $15 minimum wage too, we wanted you to fight on that, and you didn't. And the reason why that's thoughtful of Max is because, remember the initial argument from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez as to why they couldn't force the vote on Medicare for all, the initial argument was, we need to keep our powder dry for a fight we could actually win, like a $15 minimum wage. So on that, I'd be in favor of this strategy. 
but then the fight came up for $15 minimum wage, and they didn't fight like that. So you can't say, we got to keep our powder dry for the fight on $15 minimum wage, and then the fight on $15 minimum wage happens, and you don't use your gunpowder. You continue to keep it dry. You said you were going to use it, and you didn't use it. So Max was basically pointing out how, well, you didn't really fight on Medicare for All, and you really fight on the $15 minimum wage. Why? Like, give us a reason. And Corey's response was... <laughs> but listen, having said all that, I think Max's criticism is correct. Um, I don't... I hate her answer on this. You got to give credit to Corey on the eviction ban. She's literally sleeping on the floor of the, uh, uh, excuse me, on the steps of the Capitol in order to try to bring attention to this and get Pelosi to call people back to Washington to vote on this. Um, so she's fighting on this front and it's getting headlines and she's doing the right thing. So credit on that and credit, at least as of right now, on the infrastructure bill where they said, listen, don't bring the bipartisan bill to us unless you're going to pass the partisan reconciliation bill. So they're saying, we'll tank the whole shit if you don't do the right thing on the partisan human infrastructure bill. So on those two things, they're fighting and they're doing the right thing. And I hope they hold the line. For the love of God, hold the line. Um, if they don't, well, then they'll be letting us down just as much as they did on uh, $15 minimum wage and on Medicare for all. But uh, so that's, that's what's going on right now. Again, credit on fighting the eviction... Uh, fighting to extend the eviction moratorium and on the infrastructure bills. Credit on that front. When it comes to $15 minimum wage and Medicare for all, no credit and the critics are correct.